For a given steric number, a given number of electron groups around an atom, there's only one way to place all of those electron groups as far apart from one another as possible. These are referred to as the electron group arrangements, and in this video, we're going to take a survey of the different electron group arrangements for the different steric numbers. So before we dive into that survey, it's just worth remarking again that for a given steric number, there's only one way to put the electron groups as far apart as possible. For each of these electron group arrangements, we're going to focus on how to draw each arrangement and the bond angles between the AX bonds within each structure. One thing worth noting is that the bond angles in Vesper structures are idealized. Vesper theory is just a first approximation to molecular geometry. Real molecules tend to have bond angles that do not fit the Vesper ideal exactly. One last comment on electron group arrangements. We use this term, electron group arrangements, very specifically to denote the arrangement of electron groups around an atom. And the reason why we use this specific term is going to become apparent in a future video. It has to do with the fact that there's a distinction between bonding and non-bonding electrons. And whether we account for non-bonding lone pairs or not affects how we think about the arrangement of electrons and the geometry of the molecule. So we'll see this idea again later, but it's worth noting that this term, electron group arrangements, is one that we use with a very specific meaning in mind. The arrangement of all the electron groups, bonding and non-bonding electrons, around a central atom. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The smallest steric number that we can have is 2, and a central atom surrounded by two electron groups has a linear electron group arrangement. For a central atom A, with two electron groups, the only way to put these as far apart from one another as possible is to make them oppose one another directly, such that the bond angle between them is 180 degrees. This is the linear geometry, because the two peripheral atoms and the central A atom form a line. A prototypical example here is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide nicely illustrates that we count each of these double bonds as a single electron group, so that the central carbon atom has only two electron groups around it. This is the linear electron group arrangement. If we add another electron group, we get to a steric number of three and the trigonal planar electron group arrangement. So for three electron groups surrounding a central atom, the way to put the groups as far apart from each other as possible is essentially to point them to the corners of a triangle, an equilateral triangle in the case of three identical peripheral groups X. This is the trigonal planar arrangement. It's called as much because of this triangular shape and the fact that all three electron groups lie within the same plane. So the trigonal refers to the fact that the three X atoms form a triangle and all three of the electron groups are in the same plane, so it's called trigonal planar. In the drawing on the slide of the prototypical example BF3, on the right-hand drawing, we've canted the plane a little bit to bring one of the fluorines out towards you and one of the fluorines back away from you. It's worth committing this convention to memory because you'll see it quite often in organic chemistry, for example. A bond that's on a so-called wedge, this bolded bond, is coming out towards you, and a bond that's on a so-called dash is going back away from you. A straight line, of course, simply means that the bond is in the plane of the screen. For four electron groups, we arrive at the tetrahedral arrangement. And the tetrahedral arrangement is the first that really invokes the third dimension. The tetrahedral arrangement is extremely important to organic chemistry, and so it's worth taking a minute to appreciate exactly how it's drawn. So a tetrahedron from geometry is essentially a pyramid with a triangle as its base. And the tetrahedral arrangement involves a central atom at the center of the tetrahedron and the peripheral X atoms at the corners of the tetrahedron. There are four corners and there are four electron groups for the tetrahedral arrangement. If we imagine looking at this arrangement, say from an angle like this, such that these two bonds highlighted in red are in the plane, we find that one of the bonds is coming out towards it, us, that's the bond I've highlighted in blue, and another bond is going away from us, and that's the bond I've highlighted in black. So translating this drawing into a more typical chemical structure, we might see this as the two bonds in red in the plane, just as straight lines, 
like this, the blue bond on a wedge coming out towards us, and the black bond on a dash going away from us. And it's worth noting here that the dashed bond, the black dashed bond, is on the same side of the red in-plane bonds as the blue wedge bond is. These are drawn next to each other. That's critical for drawing the tetrahedral arrangement properly, and it's a common mistake when students draw tetrahedral carbons in organic chemistry. The prototypical example nicely illustrates this geometry. It's methane, CH4. The bond angle, by the way, between all of the electron groups within the tetrahedral arrangement is 109.5 degrees. And so we're still in a situation where all of the bond angles are equal to a single value. Here it's 109.5 degrees. When we add a fifth electron group for a steric number of five, we arrive at the very interesting trigonal bipyramidal electron group arrangement. In this arrangement, we have three electron groups that form a trigonal planar structure, but with two additional groups above and below the trigonal plane. If we think about what this would look like just as a geometric shape, we would have two trigonal pyramids kind of sitting one on top of the other. Notice that there are two types of positions in the trigonal bipyramidal arrangement. There are these groups that are above and below the trigonal plane, which I'm drawing in red. Those are called axial. And there are groups within the trigonal plane, and these are called equatorial. The angle between adjacent equatorial groups, of course, is 120 degrees. It's the same angle that we saw for the trigonal planar arrangement. But the angle between an equatorial group and an axial group now is only 90 degrees because the two axial substituents are related linearly. The angle between, for example, the two red chlorines on the slide is 180 degrees. The angle between an axial and an equatorial chlorine is half that, 90 degrees. The largest steric number that we typically see is six. And for six electron groups, we arrive at the octahedral arrangement. The octahedral arrangement starts with a central atom surrounded by four atoms pointing to the corners of a square. And one way to represent that is to show one bond coming out towards us, one bond going back away, and two bonds in the plane at right angles to the line formed by the bonds coming out and going back. So this is a square planar structure with four x atoms at the corners of a square. If we add two axial groups above and below the square plane, we arrive at the octahedral arrangement. However, note that there's symmetry here, that what I've drawn in red is not really a special type of position. All of the positions within the octahedral arrangement are equivalent. There's no such thing as axial or equatorial here because all of the bond angles are 90 degrees in the octahedral arrangement. And a typical example here is sulfur hexafluoride, SF6.